Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples on a deceptively cool Florida Friday. Uh, in fact, it's supposed to be up in the mid 80s later, which absolutely sucks. And uh, then we've got a whole week of, you know, mid 80s, high 80s weather, uh, which is just absolutely unacceptable. Uh, you know, again, little Greta Thunberg has given up her childhood to sail around on $2 million yachts and meet world leaders and that sort of thing. Uh, you know, if if the weather continues the way that it does, then, um, nah, she's still a nitwit. Anyway, um, what do I have today? I have this 2004 Mercedes-Benz SL500 Roadster. Uh, this is uh, what's internally designated as the R230 SL. It's the fifth generation SL, which uh, we now know stands for super light, uh, not sport light, as was often thought. Yeah, it's a long ongoing debate, but uh, a little while ago they found some stuff in the Mercedes archives about the original SL, and super light it is. Uh, now, I've done quite a few of these cars over the years. You know, it's just a car that's one of our bread and butter pieces. We get a lot of them in. Uh, Naples is a, uh, a place, you know, there was a time when you could walk on SL Roadsters from North Naples to South Naples uh, without ever setting your foot uh, on the pavement. They're just that prolific down here. Uh, so we do get the cream of the crop and, you know, it's not that hard to find really nice examples. Uh, this one, in fact, I got from, I believe it was Mercedes-Benz of Benita Springs. Uh, it was a trade in there, 04, low miles in the 40s, well kept, you know, fat Michelin's on. You can just tell the guy who owned this knew what he was doing. And uh, they're just not that tough to find. I mean, if you're in Skokie, it's going to be a little bit harder. Uh, but anyway, I've done all of this. I've done the history of the SL. I've done the history of Mercedes, including the Nazi stuff. Uh, you know, is it... Uh, you know, with a sports car, Grand Tour, whatever. You know, we've done all that. So let's move on to something else. Something that I get asked a lot, or maybe I don't get asked enough, is can an average guy own and maintain one of these? Now, this is a pretty important question, particularly now that one can buy a nice example of one of these cars for less than the cost of a new Hyundai Elantra. Uh, you know, you can get this 40,000 mile thing for, you know, much less than you'd go pay at the Hyundai dealer. So, but should you? You know, I mean, is it... It, yeah, there's so many schools of thought on this. Is this a thing where, you know, you're going to buy it, you're going to be killed by maintenance, you're going to go broke uh, in the poor house as you try to keep it running? Uh, is it the old thing where, uh, oh, Mercedes are, you know, bulletproof, you just put oil in them and, you know, keep driving, they're just fantastic. You know, no. The answer is no to all of those things. I mean, it's somewhere in between. There's some people who should own one of these and can, and there's some people who shouldn't. Uh, you know, you have to bear in mind that this, despite its current price, is a $100,000, uh, you know, at the time, state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Roadster. And that's the car that you're going to be maintaining. You're not going to be maintaining the $15,000 car or whatever the hell it is. Uh, you know, you can even buy these things at the 5 to 8 range if you want a real turd. Uh, but uh, should you? Again, is it going to nail you to the cross? Well, uh, here's a person who shouldn't own it. Uh, you know, an 18-year-old girl going off to college. That would be a very, very bad idea. You know, it is nice and safe. It's got airbags everywhere, but uh, she just doesn't need it. She doesn't need the worry, and uh, it's just not a good idea. Uh, you know, should a guy who's, you know, eating Raymond noodles Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday until his paycheck comes in, the way that I tend to live, uh, you know, should he buy one of these? No, probably not. A shoestring budget is uh, its a bad idea to have a car like this. But, you know, can an average guy, uh, you know, who has a little bit of savings and, you know, does fairly well, but, uh, you know, is not your typical uh, SL buyer? Well, yeah, the, the answer is, yeah, he can own a car like this. And uh, there's just some things you have to bear in mind when you do it. Uh, now, mechanically, these cars are absolutely bulletproof. Uh, you're talking, you know, BMW you couldn't build a V8 to save their lives. Uh, maybe I'll get flack for that. I don't care. It's true. They're finicky. They're plasticky. They're hyper-technical and miserable. They break. They leak. They're crappy. Uh, but they build the best inline-six in the business, which is why it's such a shame they've gotten away from the inline-six. Mercedes-Benz, on the other hand, has always built a great V8. 
they had a pretty good V6, but their V8s are indestructible. Uh, you're never going to do any kind of like internal mechanical work to one of these. It's not going to drop a valve or spin a rod or, uh, you know, camshaft bearing or something. It just isn't going to happen. Uh, you know, mechanically, the only thing you're going to be looking at are the occasional uh, oil seals because they do like to leak. But uh, that's another thing we can get into. The trouble points on these cars, the thing that, you know, people worry about, and they should, although they're not as scary as people think, are the top hydraulics. There's, uh, depending on the year, I think there's either 11 or 12 or 10 or 11 of them in these cars. And uh, the sport suspension with all the hydraulics, the ABC stuff, uh, you know, those are two areas where these cars can and do fail. And if you're the kind of guy who, you know, walks out to his car, he sees one side sitting way low, you know, the shock has gone down overnight or the strut, and the first thing you do is run to your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Don't buy this car because that is going to cause you a world of misery. Mercedes-Benz of Naples, about 10 years ago, I want to say it sold for $400 million or something. So you have to bear in mind that the... The service writers there, the mechanics, the department, they're not really your friend, at least in the sense where they want to save you money. Uh, they're desperately trying to get back that $400 million and then some. So uh, they're going to nail you to the cross. They're, they're going to absolutely hammer you. And uh, you might get a free espresso in their uh, service waiting room, uh, but you're going to pay for it at the end. And uh, that is uh, the kind of guy who probably should stray away from one of these. Now that said, independent mechanics can be just as bad. Just because you found some great little service guy somewhere doesn't mean that he's not putting a daughter through college driving one of these cars and needs to uh, you know, make a little bit of extra money to keep it going. So uh, you really do have to uh, you really have to give that some consideration. Where the car is going to be maintained is important. Now, if you're a car guy who has some mechanical ability and enjoys using it, then absolutely jump on one of these things because you'll be able to do a lot of the simple stuff to it to keep it going. Uh, and if you've got a mechanic who you really do trust, think is a good guy, has a little bit, he doesn't have to be a dedicated Mercedes mechanic. These things are pretty straightforward to figure out. There's tons of uh, you know resources and references out there for uh, you know, a simple guy to look up and use. So, you know, he doesn't have to be dedicated to Mercedes to fix this car. Doesn't doesn't hurt, mind you. But uh, anyway, if you have that guy, then yeah, you can also do this car. And I'll tell you why. Things like the top cylinders, uh, you know, the 11 of them, there was a time when they would start leaking, and they're going to leak in every one of these cars. In fact, in this car, we replaced all the top cylinders uh, because you just have to sometimes. There was a time when you could only buy those from Mercedes-Benz, and they probably cost like four or five grand, uh, you know, in parts. Uh, you know, that was a misery. You buy one of these things, you get in the car, you go to put your top down so you can go on a nice, lovely run to the Asian masseuse or the nightclub, and all of a sudden you've got hydraulic fluid squirting all over you. So it takes some of the joy out of life. Uh, you drive it to the Mercedes dealer and they present you with a $7,000 estimate. Well, you know, that is the cause of all the internet terror that you see surrounding some of these things. Uh, these days it's different. There are a lot of companies out there, uh, uh, Cabri Relay hydraulics and some other ones that rebuild the soft top cylinders. So, uh, you know, your mechanic can pull the cylinders out of your car, ship them to this guy. He'll ship you a new set that's already sitting on the shelf and then rebuild yours and sell them again. And it costs a, a, a small percentage of what the OEM part uh, costs from Mercedes and will last just as long, if not longer. Uh, but, um, you know, that said, there's ways to also keep them going and minimize the amount of trouble you get into them. Uh, that's also true of the suspension now. Are not built, uh, they sell rebuilt struts for this car that are about 500 bucks a pop. So, you know, what was a five or $6,000 job once is now much, much cheaper. So, uh, you know, you really can own one of these things, be clever about it, and, uh, and drive them affordably. And don't be another, you know, you hear a vibration 
frustration. So you run to the dealer and get them to, you know, ram something up your rear end. You don't have to freak out and panic over every little thing on these cars. Be a little bit judicious. Uh, you know, if you look under the hood and you see a little bit of oil seeping around a valve cover, let it be for a little while. You know, let it sweat. It's fine. The minute you start seeing it going down the side of the engine or hitting the ground, that's the time to start getting it fixed. You don't have to uh, be over attentive to the maintenance on these cars unless you want to and you've got deep pockets. But if you're that guy, then you're going to spend a lot more owning one of these things than you have to. Uh, real quick, we'll get into why these cars are pretty cool. I'm going to start inside the trunk. So again, this is an 04. Uh, they're all basically the same from 03 to 06, and then in 07, same body, but they bumped up the motor a little bit. They put in that 550. Some people find that more desirable. I don't disagree. More horsepower is good, but uh, at the same time, you know, this thing has enough to keep you going. Uh, anyway, this beautiful aluminum, they call this the Vario roof, uh, folds beautifully into the trunk. Uh, you can press uh, this little guy here. Uh, and it will lift the trunk or uh, the roof up for you to give you better access to your uh, to your cargo Right in there. I like how this still has all the infant containment net. So if you've got a baby or uh, not, uh, oh, For the love of God I can see our detailer spent a lovely amount of time doing the trunk uh, But anyway, if you've got some kind of little toddler or something you might be able to stick them in here or a wiener dog something and uh, you know, he's gonna be nice and happy till you pop the trunk open and Retrieve them later on But uh, anyway a nice feature in the trunk of the SL very very thoughtful stuff Have a look under the hood So under here, if I can find the release, we will find a 5-liter, 300-horsepower, very torquey V8. Uh, that's made into a 7-speed automatic transmission, which helps it get pretty decent gas mileage. And uh, if you look under the hood of this 04, this uh, sort of well-kept southern car, uh, you could get some idea of what kind of car you should be buying. Uh, you can see how immaculate the front of this motor is, uh, absolutely immaculate. You don't see any, uh, you know, oil dripping, you don't see any northern crust, there's no rust on all the bolts. Uh, that's a very, very good sign. You want to see something that's been maintained. Uh, you want to have a good baseline to start with. Uh, you also see that uh, it has a pretty fresh um, autocraft battery battery in there, a gold, somebody paid a little bit of money for that, and uh, that is uh, also a good sign that somebody has been after the car. Uh, and uh, anyway, everything is nice and proper under the hood of this, uh, this low mileage guy. Uh, now it is, again, a fairly simple car. Uh, it really you know, does have some high-tech gadgetry, as every SL does. It's basically the German engineers showing off when they build them. Uh, but it is a fairly straightforward car, and certainly more simple uh, than the cars being, you know, built currently. So, uh, anyway, yeah, and mechanically, not an engine you have to worry about. You know, you may have to put a belt tensioner on, or, uh, you know, fix a valve cover gasket or something, but uh, mechanically you just don't have to worry about this thing at all. Uh, now, you can see it has little sensor things running to the top of those struts. Uh, that's part of that ABC Sport suspension, which can be quite complicated and costly if you do it wrong. Uh, now, that is a fluid and air-controlled system that pumps up each individual strut all the way around the car. It replaces sway bars uh, to keep the car level when you're braking, when you're cornering, when you're accelerating, and uh, nicely attached to the pavement. Now, when these struts start leaking, the car loses its ride height you'll walk out and either the whole front end uh, or uh, just part of the front end will be absolutely in the weeds like you're some kind of California lowrider but uh, if you see that don't panic I mean again this thing from our knot is what like 550 bucks if you're a uh, you know a guy with a little bit of ability you can probably put it in yourself get a buddy to program it with this computer and uh, it doesn't have to cost you uh, you know thousands and thousands of dollars to get going so uh, anyway there it is everything nice and proper under here and uh, working very nicely let's have a look inside 
Oh, okay, these things. You'll see this. It's missing these two little flapper guys here. Uh, this was a design flaw for Mercedes-Benz, certainly in my opinion. Uh, when this car came, it had little, you know, the, you see where the cutout is. They had little flapper things that would come up when the top lifted. And, uh, the, you know, when it went back down, it would then cover it. And it looks better than just having a couple little holes there. Uh, that said, they're over 800 bucks now to put a set of new ones on these cars. Over, I mean, it's a, over almost $1,000 to have two little plastic flapper things. Uh, I just can't see doing it. It seems crazy to me um, because they, they didn't change the design. So maybe you get another year or two out of them before one of them cracks off again. Uh, the minute one's gone, the other one looks ridiculous. So uh, in my mind, it's better to, I know this is sacrilege to some of you MB Club members out there. Oh my God, how could you stand living that way? Well, I just can't see spending $1,000 every couple of years to have little flapper things on the back of the top. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Have a look inside the car. Okay, now this guy, you can see that this is a roll bar that's kind of neatly tucked into the rear of the car. Uh, that works as part of the... Uh, uh, the airbag system, so to speak. You can put it up and down manually, but more importantly, uh, in the event of collision or trouble with the top down, that thing's going to ratchet up uh, in uh, about, you know, half a second or less and give you rollover protection, which is fantastic. Uh, these things are quite neat and weird. Uh, they're sort of cargo seat belts, so uh, if you lay something across your package shelf there, like a toddler, uh, you can run this guy over it, click it into a little receptacle down there and uh, that becomes a way to keep your cargo secure but a bit of a weird option for Mercedes or standard open this up you got a first aid kit you got a CD changer if you're still into those and uh, everything nice over on this side uh, with the manuals this one are inside not in the car but that's a good spot to put your manuals you could also put a, you know some kind of Colt Python 357 with a six inch barrel in there you got plenty of room uh, maybe even a uh, uh, 50 cal Desert Eagle or something, all gonna go in there with no problems. I do like the little seat uh, access button on the top, press it and it goes back, very nice stuff. Uh, because this one has the optional Parktronic, uh, that's this little guy here. This is going to light up with red and yellow dots as you're backing up. You can see it in your rearview mirror and make sure you don't run over any toddlers if you're worried about such a thing. Uh, you know, the build quality of these cars is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, maybe not what it was in the 50s and 60s when Mercedes was a, a very different company, but still pretty damn good. So you get leather wrapped everything, you get beautiful wood in the doors, you get side airbags you get these great little pockets there's another spot for a big handgun or switchblade uh, you got your power window controls your 800 way power seats your memory uh, this uh, has a nice option package so you get the heated and cooled seats lovely option to have in the uh, uh, you know unusually warm winters down here you also get a uh, Bose uh, sound system so very very nice stuff uh, these do have the orthopedic seats you see uh, it's got the pulse controls and the things where you can light up all your uh, lumbar and stuff. Not uh, The chances of those things working on virtually any car of this vintage from Mercedes is extremely rare. Uh, it does technically have massage seats. I haven't really tried them in this because I just haven't bothered trying them in SLs like this for years. Uh, they're huge money to fix uh, when they go south. The little airbags inside start leaking. Uh, they don't inflate anymore so you don't get the massage thing. And uh, you can miss it, and it's fantastic, but you don't want to pay two grand to get each seat. You know, per seat, uh, maybe a little less, but still huge money uh, to make that go. So I would say on 99.8% of cars out there, uh, that uh, pulse seat function is going to be an operative. And uh, I would forget about it now. <laughs> don't even think about trying to fix it. Because again, you spend your, you know, 1500 bucks or whatever to get the seat going. Two years later or less, you're in the same predicament. So what the hell is the point of that? And uh, that is, again, what it takes to own a Mercedes. You have to be able to let some of that little stuff go. Uh, if you don't, you're just going to be miserable. And uh, even without the pulse seats, uh, they're incredibly soft, lovely, supportive, really the best seats in the business. So you're not really missing out on much. All right, you see it fires to life with a nice healthy growl. 
Uh, this is one thing I've never liked on this generation SL, or these weird little Sydney, uh, Sydney Opera House looking instrument cluster housing. I think it's just a bit strange. Um, I don't know, it just looks weird to me, like an arachnid staring at me through the steering wheel with big iPods, but not that kind of iPod. But it works fine, and uh, you get what you need. You got your water temp, you got your fuel. Of course, it's low in this because nobody cares to put gas in them except me. Uh, you've got your 160 mile an hour speedo. You've got your uh, uh, tack over there with your uh, outside temperature and your uh, transmission indicator, PRNDL. You see the little C next to it. Uh, that stands for comfort mode on the transmission, uh, which you can have comfort or uh, standard. Uh, I like comfort because what the hell, uh, but I suppose you could go into standard and hit the ABC Sport and start doing corners. Uh, you see just 48,000 miles on this thing, very nice. Uh, if you hit these steering wheel buttons, you can get into your trip computers, your settings, that sort of thing. Uh, over here you can see it's nice, we have no malfunctions, thank God. Nobody likes malfunctions. Oh God, let me get my seatbelt on. Uh, this also has the optional wood and leather steering wheel, which is quite nice, uh, lovely to grip. Uh, although in the middle of July, you definitely want to put a little towel over that uh, because otherwise it gets to about 800 degrees and you touch it, you're going to end up at a Shriners Hospital. Uh, over here, you've got automatic headlights, nice stuff. You've got your cruise control switch at the classic Mercedes style. You've got your uh, uh, wipers over there. You got this nice sort of faux leather covered dash with uh, your vents, your lock and unlock button, your uh, different uh, HVAC controls. Down here you've got kind of an early version of Mercedes-Benz uh, cockpit management and data system, the command unit uh, that gives you your navigation, which, you know, works. It's a CD-based system. Bear in mind this is now 60 years old. Um, you can get where you're going with it. You can even update the CDs. Uh, it does, you know, again, CD-based system. But what the hell, use your phone. Uh, it's going to be way more accurate and convenient. Uh, this thing, you have to be Stephen Hawking to program. Uh, but, uh, you know, you do get your... It doesn't have Bluetooth. It had some kind of... Uh, you know, you could use a Mercedes-Benz StarTech phone or something. So that's long gone. I do believe there is some plug-in somewhere that you can use to put a Bluetooth system in these cars, but um, it was a while ago we did it and I don't remember it now. Uh, otherwise, you just use one of those little parrot things. Uh, you've got some cup holders here, which are nice, uh, a little bit finicky, and you worry they could break, but they never seem to. Uh, down here, you've got a very nice climate control unit, dual side, all very lovely. Uh, here is your uh, shifter assembly, uh, ESP, Electronic Stability Program, that uses the traction control and the ABC Sport and Airmatic stuff to keep the car on the road. All very nice. Uh, this is uh, part of the Airmatic uh, suspension here. So if I press that once, you can see it says ABC car being raised. Very, very nice stuff. And what it's actually going to do, and I'll get out and show you, It has now raised the car. Look at that flies. We've already got flies. These are love bugs, even worse. Anyway, you've got um, you got a little bit more ride height. So let's do that twice. So we get two lights on the button. And now this thing's going to be skied like Bigfoot or Gravedigger. It just starts going up and up and up. And what that's going to do is give you more ground clearance when you need it. Uh, you know, let's say you're loading the car in a trailer or some such, or trying to get over a bump stop if you're parking. I tell you what, here's the thing. Everybody rips the front bumpers off these cars when they park them at Whole Foods. Uh, if you're letting someone who doesn't know these cars drive it, they don't know to not ram the bump stop when they go to park because people seem to think that's how you park is you just ram the bump stop and then when you uh, back up on this car, it just hooks into it like a grappling hook and peels off the bottom. Uh, hit, the, uh, <laughs> hit the ABC. Make it ride high. The car's going to look silly, but at least they won't rip the bumper off, and then when you get back in it, you can put it back down again. Keep your car nice. Oh, God. Man, I'm having troubles. Anyway, 
Uh, so you got that going there. That's your ABC Sport. Uh, you hit that and it's going to handle uh, a fair bit better than it does without it. Uh, actually, I should say it's got two settings basically. Really comfortable and, you know, also comfortable. Uh, this will turn off the parking sensors if for any reason you're in a, you know, drive through at Dunkin' Donuts and it's catching one of the bushes near you and it's just beeping and driving you crazy. Hit that and it'll turn it off. Uh, your mirrors, if the car's getting towed, hopefully not to the Mercedes dealer if you've been listening. Um, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, some Mercedes dealers are fine and they're good and they're nice people. Uh, just most aren't. Uh, anyway, that'll turn off the motion alarm and uh, make it so the alarm isn't going off as it's going down the road. Uh, in here you got a nice glove box, has air conditioning in it or heat depending on what you got it set to out here. So keep your tuna salad sandwich cold in there. Uh, up here you've got your self dimming mirror with home link. Uh, garage door openers beneath your uh, SOS, Mercedes-Benz Embrace, kind of like OnStar. Uh, all your light controls are there, nice stuff, and uh, everything sort of lovely. Uh, to run the top, well first I'll do the roll bar. So we can lift that up, and I press this guy here, and there you see it. The roll bar comes up, and uh, frankly looks kind of neat driving around. I mean, I'm not going to do it because... I don't know, I don't want to draw and do attention to myself, but some guys very much enjoy popping up that roll bar and uh, driving around in what appears to be kind of a sporting fashion. Let's get that back down. And that is also hydraulically controlled, so just have to ponder all that stuff. Otherwise, press down on that flapper button. There you can see the top comes up, uh, trunk comes up from the front, the Vario roof beautifully comes into place very very quickly windows go up down goes the top and you get a little hard top closed indicator on your instrument cluster and now you're in a very nicely sealed coupe in fact I'm gonna hop out again I'm getting too old for this you can have a look at how nice that looks with the top up lovely Really, really handsome design. I like the curvature. Uh, I also like the wheels on this car. Uh, I think the guy got annoyed with the factory wheels that were on it and upgraded to the uh, V12 wheels from a similar year uh, AMG SL65. Uh, beautiful, beautiful wheels on the car. Uh, AMG Mercedes, <clears throat> very, very correct for it and uh, give it an absolutely lovely look. Also looks like he bought Michelin's on the way to trade it in. God bless him for that. <clears throat> All right, let's go for a spin. Get something proper there, there's our trip odometer. Now here is where this car gets rewarding. Here is the point of why you've asked this question to begin with. Can I afford to own and drive this car? Because when you're driving it and owning it, uh, it is incredibly rewarding in terms of uh, driver involvement. I mean, you just feel like you've got this you know, heavy but not unmanageable, it doesn't feel in any way lethargic, uh, powerful, uh, intense German Grand Touring Roadster underneath you. Uh, the steering is incredible, uh, you know, the throttle response is epic, beautiful torque, instant torque from that V8, uh, and uh, it just makes you feel like a million bucks, especially with the top down. See if one of these nitwits is going to let us out without killing us. All right, so yeah, lovely throttle response. You have any temp in this thing? Yeah, we got some temp. So you hammer it, you get a lovely sound out of the pipes. Oh man, is that sweet. And there it is, that's the joy. That's why you want to buy one of these things instead of that stupid Hyundai. Uh, you're not going to get the same amusement at all uh, when you're uh, driving around. I mean, you can dissect traffic like a surgeon in this thing. I mean, it's just epic. And it's a fantastic highway cruiser. Uh, you know, really, really comfy on the highway. You get feedback, but not too much feedback. Uh, just absolutely perfect for, you know, 150 mile an hour blast down the Audubon, uh, maybe down I-75.
So there it is. So it's a very rewarding car to drive and to operate and to be seen in and to, you know, to sort of enjoy yourself in. You just feel like a million bucks. And uh, that's the reward you get for uh, intelligently owning one. But if you're not going to intelligently own one, if you're going to be paranoid, if you're going to be neurotic, if you're going to, you know, go to the dealer with no research and just do anything any mechanic says, then, you know, don't bother. Don't bother. It's not going to serve you very well. Uh, a guy's going to try to use you like an ATM machine. But, uh, you know, if you keep yourself a little bit educated and know what the parts cost, know what the car needs, be judicious about what gets repaired and what gets delayed, uh, then uh, there's no reason that the average guy uh, can't own a uh, R230 SL500 and enjoy the hell out of it like I'm doing right now. So uh, this one is for sale at our lot at uh, Auto Europa Naples. Uh, it's uh, Again, this is an 04. Uh, 30, what is that, no, 48,000 miles, something like that, 44, very low miles, beautifully kept car, Mercedes, new Mercedes trade. Uh, if you have an interest, aenaples.com or uh, give Marty a call at 239-298-8000. Uh, thanks so much for having a look, we really appreciate it, and we'll see you with the next one. Take care.